Viewers should consult a professional before adopting any of the training techniques in this program. Any activity you do with your dog is at your own risk and may produce varied results. Tonight on Caesar 911, an overly excited dog. He pulls and he spins and he lunges at everybody and everything going by. Disrupts these newlyweds' lives. Our dog is putting a strain on our marriage and going to get us kicked out of our home. And drains their energy. I really want to run on the beach with my dog, and I can't do that because I'm going to be winded or my leg's going to hurt. Caesar calls in special guest Jillian Michaels for help. You bought a dog for the life that you don't yet have. And then a nervous German Shepherd mix. My buddy Evan has a dog that bumps everybody out and attacks every dude that passes by. Jeopardizes a friendship. I am constantly being bitten by Evan's dog, Amigo. Go ahead. I'm Amigo's lamb chop. This is Caesar 911. Caesar's first 911 call comes from concerned parents, Sergio and Mary. Their daughter and son-in-law's dog is creating big problems for the couple. At the marina, they call home. How are you, Miss Bonnie? Hi. Nice to meet how you. Are you Sergio. Here. How are you? Good. So, how can I help you? Well, our daughter, Crystal, son-in-law Anthony, they got married and they have a beautiful dog, Tic Tac. Tic Tac. But there's a problem. He is not well behaved. Something's off. They got a boat, you know, they live that's in the good. boat, but you in know, the boat. as soon as you get them off the boat, that's where the problem starts. Anytime he sees any quick movement, skateboard, bike, people jogging, uh, other dogs, definitely, uh, he just absolutely goes wild. He's scary. He runs in circles, runs and runs. <laughs> We don't know why Tic Tac spins, other than the fact that I believe he just gets so out of control in his own mind that that's all he can think about doing. It's like kids running around the house. Ah! Yeah, he runs around the yard and runs in the house and runs back Pacing. out. Pacing. Pacing is really bad. How is he with dogs? Tiki loses it. He's over friendly. And that's kind of a problem when you see a big dog coming at you, and it's it's scary. Tic Tac will jump on you and try to lick you. He did that to one of the tenants. And so the tenant took it as viciousness. They decided that from now on, any time the dog is out of the boat, he needs to have that muscle on. Tic Tac looks like a monster coming at them. When he has the muzzle on. He looks extremely scary. He looks like Hannibal. Basically, the marina said, unless your dog is trained or you have some sort of training, don't come back with the dog. They have a lot on the line if, if something doesn't change, and it's, it's nothing good. If Caesar can't fix this, then they might have to give up the boat and the lifestyle that they thought they would have. The worst scenario is Tic Tac has to go back to the pound, and he'll be put down. So what do we need to do? How do we see your daughter and your uh, son-in-law? They're here. They're about to take the dog off the boat. Then you know Tiki. When you see him, you'll know. So let's go see. Caesar positions himself so he can covertly observe Anthony and Crystal walking Tic Tac. They're just completely out of control now. Oh. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, my goodness, it's Caesar, babe. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Slow, slow down, slow down, slow down. Let's go back over there. Let's go inside that kennel. <laughs> OK. Yeah, it's like a come kennel. On, Just come over here, like right here, because it's All still right. hot. It's still hot. It's still hot. There you go. Let it smell a little bit. My name is Crystal Vaughn. My name is Anthony Vaughn. And our dog, Tic Tac, is basically putting a strain on our marriage and going to get us kicked out of our home. Well, we've been married a few months now. We got married in. Uh, <laughs> November. <laughs> I'm gonna hang out with Daddy. We moved onto the boat right after we got married. Marina life should be peaceful, and I mean it is until Tic Tac's out. Yeah. <laughs> we found Tic Tac when we were at Best Friends Shelter. 
We went in there one day just to, you know, take a look around. And he got our attention, though, because he did this little, you know, like jumping thing when we walked past his cage, which was real cute until, you know, about a month into owning him, we realized this dog's great, but he's... A little excited. He, he's more than a handful. No, no, no. Because Tic Tac is so active and just so out of control, I can't simply go out on the beach with him or go for walks because I'm afraid my leg's gonna hurt or I'm just gonna be too tired. From the minute you step off the boat, it's a frightening world for him. The dog you see inside and the dog you see on a leash is two different dogs. It really is. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde type of situation. When Tic Tac's on the leash, he's a bit of a nightmare. He pulls and he spins and he kind of just lunges at everybody and everything going by. With Tic Tac, the spinning thing, to an onlooker, it's, it's probably pretty funny. But for us, it's every single day and it's just exhausting, really. He's not both my kneecaps out of place. You know, I'm worried about him getting hurt. I'm worried about getting hurt. And the sad thing about it is he's always locked up on the boat. The marina is a small community, so word spreads quickly about the crazy dog. We're known he's, as the uh, owners with the vicious dog. We are either going to lose our home in the marina or give up our dog. There's no way we can give this dog up now. He's family. and. There's no way we can leave the marina. This is our home. If Caesar can't help us, we, we have everything to lose. When you approach any dog that is in this state of mind, best just slow down. It's best to put a leash when he's not really actually looking. There you go, now we got the happy guy. <laughs> if I'm gonna use one tool for control, it's gonna be a rope. This is a rope, by the way, right? right. It's yeah. just a rope. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Then I want you to see how I do it and see if there's any difference. Okay. Okay? Instead of being in this position, like you're just skiing, you know right, what I mean? Yeah. The first thing is, Anthony's posture is all wrong. He's kind of hunched over. He should be standing straight up with his chest out like a confident pack leader. And Tic Tac should be next to him, not leading the way. Caesar's first exercise is to have crew members start to ride by Tic Tac. If Caesar can see Tic Tac's trigger, he can correct the behavior. The touch here is just to distract him. It's not hard. It's just to distract him. Because he gets into a pulling state. Caesar just kept Tic Tac from getting into that just really over the top, out of control state that he normally gets into. I can't believe it. When the leash is here, you pull up. OK. Um, when the leash is here, you pull back. This right. Way. Yeah. That's it. No. Just that switch. Right. Makes a big difference. Oh, Huge. Yes. Once the leash or harness, look at this, yeah. goes in the bottom, Demeanor. no human has any power. Right. Zero power. You just have to hold down for your life. When Anthony walks Tic Tac, he's using a harness which pulls from behind. Many people don't realize this kind of harness actually encourage dogs to pull because it's attached to the chest. One of the strongest part of the dog's body. And the dogs interpret that as a command to pull. He's listening to you instead of telling you what to do. Right. Let's do it again. This is another way. Yeah. Shh. It started as a curious. Right. Th this can turn into aggression. Right. Shh. Hey. Shh. Hey, hey, hey. Shh. Shh. Normal. He's calm now. Yeah. Tic Tac's behavior, as you see, is very neurotic. In the spinning, the jumping, the pulling, he's not doing proper exercise. He's bored out of his mind, store energy from weeks and months. He's going crazy. He's, he's literally going crazy. He's more than they bargained for when they adopted him. This is good. This is, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, this is working great. I, I want to know how to do this. Because <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, he's with the dog 90% of the time because I'm always working. Mm -hmm. But on the weekends, it'd be nice to be able to walk my dog. Yeah. And I just, I'm afraid to do it by myself. 
wanted to give a dog a life of excitement and yeah. experiences and all of that, but he's always locked up on the boat. I want to be able to go out on the beach with him and go running with him. However, I always have to worry, is he gonna be under control or am I gonna get winded? Cause he's just really difficult to handle. Yeah. The lifestyle that Christian and Auntie were willing to give didn't really match the lifestyle that Tic Tac needed it. Dogs like Tic Tac, when they don't have the proper exercise, they're gonna go crazy. Tic Tac needs ways to release his pent up energy. So I want to bring him to the DPC, where I can show some constructive ways to exercise his body and his mind. How you doing? Really good. Tic Tac needs both of his owners to become strong pack leaders. But because Anthony spends more time with Tic Tac, I'm starting with him. First, we're gonna start with search and rescue. Search and rescue is the equivalent of hide and seek. Okay. My search and rescue course will give Tic Tac a chance to get some important exercise. And at the same time, he will see Anthony as a pack leader who can reward him with affection. It allows him to run. It allows him to find something. It allows him to get excited when he found something. So instead of us suppressing what he wants okay. to do, as we're actually telling him where to do it. Go hide. Okay. Yeah. Caesar is working with Tic Tac, an energetic Vishla lab mix, whose wild behavior could get his owners, Crystal and Anthony, kicked out of their marina home. In order to show Anthony a way to exercise Tic Tac, Caesar has set up a search and rescue challenge. Go. God, look at that. There is no human on Earth that can do it that fast. Give him affection, give him affection. Good boy, good boy. That's awesome. He was a natural. For me, he was, he's amazing. Whoa. That is a perfect time to be at the highest level of excitement. Look what he's doing. To see him finally get a chance to run and, you know, play and, and just burn off steam and just get to do all the stuff he never normally does. That was really awesome to see. He's an athlete, as you see. So that would be his ideal style of life. You guys have a different style of life when it comes to exercise, mm -hmm. right? So if you think about it, if you're fair about it, honest about it, you're not matching. Tic Tac doesn't have a place to release that energy at the marina. So I want to show Anthony an exercise that anyone can do that will address both Tic Tac's physical and mental needs. Curious, I got to present him to it. That's good, feels comfortable. The brain is about to move forward. So the mind right now is in a flight state. Right. It's like, how in the world <laughs> this floor moves? The ground's moving. Yeah, yeah. the ground is moving. See, he's, it? Getting, the he's getting yeah. relaxed. There you go. He's a quick learner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. So when you have a quick learner, if they don't get to do much with their life, they become bored. And that boredom leads them to frustration. All right, so now we're gonna speed up a little bit because he's, as you see, he's getting distracted. So we're gonna amp it up, make it faster. All this time I had Tic Tac, the athlete, and I had no idea until today. He's incredibly fast and he would definitely give me a run for my money. <laughs> He's going 4.0. <laughs> and he's still OK with it. Nice, right there. But notice that the energy calmed down. Yeah, no, he's not so yeah, all over the all place All over the now. place. Now the Tic Tacs release some pent up energy. His whole demeanor has changed. He's relaxed, he's calm. But if we want these changes to stick, Anthony and Crystal are going to have to make some changes too. You need to learn how to coach this guy. Right, absolutely. You know, just like we arrange our lives to bring a dog into our house, we also have to arrange our lifestyle. Because mm. you pick this guy, right? right? So we have to just tweak things around us. Because you have a guy that is very athletic. That's it. Let me put him in the car. 
Getting Tic Tac into a consummate state was the first step. Now they have to learn how to keep him there. And for that, we need to teach Tic Tac's other pack leader, Crystal. Caesar asks Crystal to meet him at the beach so he can show her how to be more active with Tic Tac, while also working with some of the same distractions that Tic Tac reacts to at the marina. <laughs> how are, how are you? you? Good, and you? I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. What I want to do is I want to focus on you this time, just you, yourself, and you. Okay. And coach you a little bit. How do we make sure that this guy stays in a calm, surrender state so everybody can enjoy? That's what we're going to build. Okay. Calm, calm, calm. Up until now, Krista has been very afraid of walking Tic Tac on her own. She doesn't think she can keep up with him. What she needs to do today is show Tic Tac she's in control and have him respect her as a pack leader. There you go, relax. For this exercise, Caesar uses a special head collar designed to give Crystal more control over Tic Tac's focus. Leash, short, not tense. All right, so let's move. Tic Tac is overly excited just about anything that moves. Skateboards, bikes, other dogs. So we're gonna recreate those triggers to put Crystal to the test. Right now, the activity we're doing is to stay calm when they pass by. Passing by. Caesar works with Crystal and Anthony, whose overly excited dog, Tic Tac, threatens to get them evicted from their marina home. Now, Caesar shows Crystal how to walk him by his worst distractions. So here, you only do it when he's misbehaving, right? And then once he's in the zone, don't use the sound anymore, just stay calm. So when I saw you, this is you. So, so, <laughs> the whole point of ch is before he escalates. Once he escalates, just ride the way. Just ride the way. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Otherwise, by use, using too much, you get start getting anxious. Yeah. Get some more excited and you get more frustrated. Right. Because it's not working. Crystal corrected Tic Tac, but it was too late. Once it starts spinning, there is nothing you can do, but just let him wind down. Now I'm gonna have her repeat the walk to see if she can correct Tic Tac before he reaches that excited state. Very good, very good. Walking with a dog, it should be no stress. Right. At zero, nada. Zip. Go passing by a bike. Yeah. That's better. Yeah, much better. <laughs> there we go. It's right there. This is what I wanted. I want to be able to give Tic Tac more walks like this. There you go. There's definitely been a lot of progress with Tic Tac. Just seeing him have the ability and me have the ability to walk is a huge improvement. It was me making me proud. It's nice to feel nice walking the dog. <laughs> it's I not stressful. Crystal and Anthony are now realizing how important it is for a dog owner to know the dog's physical needs before they adopt it. Otherwise, there will never be a balance pack. The good news is they both express the desire to provide Tic Tac with a more active lifestyle. And I have a very special friend who will help them achieve this goal. Later that day, Caesar asks Crystal and Anthony to leave Tic Tac at home and come for a special training session. This is my gift to you guys. Wow. My girl. I haven't seen it in a long time. <laughs> How are you? I'm Jillian Crystal. Crystal. Lovely to meet Anthony. you. Anthony. Nice to meet you. They have a very athletic dog. Okay. You know, and so I want to give a dog a very compatible human. And sometimes we have to change certain habits, certain energy, certain rituals. My friend Jillian Michaels can actually help Crystal and Anthony with Tic Tac in a way that supports the dog training I have given them. They already express the desire to be more active with Tic Tac. And think about it, who better to put them in a healthy lifestyle than Jillian Michaels? Let's begin if it's yeah, okay, okay with you. Yeah, All right, right. Anthony! <laughs> <laughs> right in here, right. please. I won't kill them. No, but you maybe won't. just have 911 <laughs> yeah. on speed dial. <laughs> Come along. Yes. Let's get on these, okay? So we're just gonna warm up. Let me see how you do. Now, you guys got apparently a very athletic dog. Mm -hmm. 
So there's, there's got to be something in you that has an ambition or a desire to have a more athletic lifestyle. No, definitely. Okay. The whole point here is to help them get healthy in order to embrace the life that they've always wanted, which includes a really active dog. One, two, three, stand up. Push. Sit down. 18 more. Okay. Up. Push the heel in. Drive the body up. Ugh. Good, kiddo. I'll tell you right now, the dog is the beginning, and you'll have some time to focus on you. Ugh. Yeah, look at you. Good. Beautiful. Push-ups, I need five of them. Okay. Okay, so you are going to be thinking about, when you're going through all of this, why you called Caesar in the first place. Because this is not going to be easy. Nothing worth having is ever easy, but it is worth it. Inhale, exhale, push. Perfection. Two, looking very good. I need three more like that. Six. <laughs> okay. There you go. So right now, tell me something that you want. Something worth fighting for. I don't even know. That is not a good answer, because I don't even know is not worth this kind of suffering. Ready? One, two, three. Hold on tight. Drop. Pull. Yes. What do you got? Something good, something fun. What do you got? <laughs> a, a healthy, happy family. Like that one. You've got to have a why to live for. And I think these guys are just coming to terms with that. And the dog was like this dream of a better life. You bought a dog for the life that you don't yet have. You got to grow into this life with the dog. All right, we're going to do another one together. Come down here for me. Four. Okay. okay. Ready? Four. Four arms. Good. And one, two, three. OK, lift from here. Breathe. I need 20 seconds. Hold. <gasps> one. OK. You came up for two seconds, went back down. If I just said you will win the life lottery and everything you told me you wanted will magically happen tomorrow, could you do 30 seconds? To help Crystal and Anthony develop the physical tools they need to keep up with their very active dog, Tic Tac. You have a guy that is very athletic. If you think about it, you're not matching. <laughs> Caesar brings in personal trainer Jillian Michaels to increase their energy. But right now, Jillian pushes Crystal to her limit. If I just said you will win the life lottery and everything you told me you wanted will magically happen tomorrow, could you do 30 seconds? <sighs> I guess. I believe we can do 30 seconds if you want it bad enough. So that last 30 seconds of the workout, it's going to be held, but I need to do this for me and for Tic Tac and for the family. Breathe. You're halfway. That's 20, and it's a 10 count. Nine, stay. Seven, five, three, one. I should have picked a minute. I knew I should have picked a minute. I knew it. Oh, she punched me in the gut, let me tell you. But it was OK once I realized. When you have a clear goal on what you're trying to achieve, you kind of have to take control of your own life. So before we end our little session here, I'm going to put together a little program, yeah? And I'm going to be helping you guys out with it. And for the next six weeks, we're going to buckle down and see what can be done. I know we can do this. It's not going to be easy the next six weeks, but I'm, you know, going to give it my 100% just like I did to that last 30 seconds of the workout. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, come on. If anything, the dog is helping us just as we're helping the dog. His high energy level is not a bad thing. He's helping us with our physical activity level. All right. Yep. All right. I think the Jillian's program for them will work great. When it's combined with my homework assignment while they're building their own energy up, I want Anthony and Crystal to practice walking with Tic Tac around his triggers and reward his good behaviors with playtime. If they stick to these assignments, they could keep Tic Tac at their home in the marina. Caesar's next 911 call comes from motorcycle buddies Robo and Adam who live in fear of their friend Evan's aggressive German Shepherd mix. What's up, guys? Hey! hey. What's up? Robo? Who's no, Adam? I'm Robo. Oh, all right. That's Adam. Yeah, it fits you. Can I see on this one? Yeah, sure. All right. Sure. Watch cool. it. 
I'm just kidding. So, what can I do? What's the deal? We need help. Amigo. Yeah. Amigo. Yeah. No bueno. No. No bueno. All right, let's, let's begin with Spanish. <laughs> yeah. I'm Evan's best friend. I am constantly being bitten by Evan's dog, Amigo. Go ahead. I'm Amigo's lamb chop. Amigo bums everybody out and attacks every dude that passes by. <laughs> Combination of all lunging, barking, growling. You just don't want to be around that. I I think you should like declaw him, detooth him, you know. Okay. Oh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about Evan. He loves bikes and cars. We'd love to get out, but yeah. you know, he wants to bring the dog or do something with the dog and we can't do any of that, you know. Amigo's pretty intimidating. He's not he doesn't look like a chihuahua, he doesn't look like a set dog. He definitely has that wolf characteristics about him. He has this like Look in his eyes, you know, when you're face to face with a wolf who can possibly, you know, do some damage, uh, that's when things get a little more real. I've been bitten by Amigo. Get out of here. Yeah. He bit me, uh, kind of took a little chomp out of here. He broke the skin, I was bleeding. Amigo, the first time I met him, he was really cool, really friendly. And uh, the next day, he was barking at another, uh, another one of our friends. And I'm like, oh, it's cool. Me and Amido already have this bond. No problem. I step over to Amido, and he takes a bite out of my hand. Yeah, Amido totally left a star on my hand. I think about him every day now. After a dog targets human, it's actually very dangerous. If Evan had to get rid of Amido, um, I think it'd be pretty devastating. I wouldn't want to see that. <laughs> So what's the best way for me to see Amigo? Well, this is Evan's garage, yeah. and he's on his way back here with Amigo, yeah. so actually we should clear out. Let's go. Right. Caesar, Robo, and Adam weed across the street. So right here, we're gonna, this is where we're gonna look at him? Yeah. Until Evan and Amigo arrive. That's, that's Evan, right? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Oh, here comes another dog. Oh my God, he's not dirty talking yeah. about dogs. So now watch what happens when we go in. All right, right. He's, he's already warning him. Oh, he's licking his mouth. What's up? Come on in. Caesar was called by Robo and Adam, who are afraid to hang out with their friend Evan because of his aggressive German Shepherd mix, Amigo. We need help. He's bitten before, and now Caesar watches from a distance as the men approach. He warned them. That doesn't. Is, is, he didn't just change. Okay? He didn't, he didn't just change. All right. He warned you guys. Yeah. Shh. Hey. Shh. Yeah, he warned. Oh, he warned. He warned. Oh, so here we are. excited to see What's you. What's up, man? What's up? Boy, you're a hard guy to get a hold of. <laughs> my name's Evan Zeller. My dog is Amigo. He's a six year old German Shepherd mix. I grew up in New York City. When I moved to California, I knew that uh, it, was, it was time to get a dog. So I wanted to try and find a dog that was interesting looking. I, I, I always wanted a wolf, but you can't really have a wolf, especially living in a city. So to me, Amigo was the best of both worlds, at least I thought. When I first brought Amigo home, initially he, he was a sweetheart. You could tell he was pretty excited to be out of the rescue. And my dad uh, walks by him to go upstairs, and Amigo like, bites on his ankle. And for me, that was like, OK, all right, Amigo, you got one strike. The second week I have Amigo and I, I bring him into work, he bit one of my coworkers, the IT guy, my boss, the global head of analytics. He definitely punctured her, she broke skin. Ow, good. After Amigo got expelled from work, I thought, okay, it's time for some serious training. I worked with a trainer a few weeks, a month or two. I think I got Amigo to a good place for a while. And next thing I know, my buddy's like, ow, 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 and Amigo's on his elbow. You know, three strikes, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Before I had Amigo, uh, my friends would come over, we'd work on bikes, uh, we'd have barbecues, it was no big deal. So now he won't let my guy friends in the garage. It's definitely changed, you know, how I hang out with my friends. I work by myself now, and sometimes, you know, a couple extra hands would be nice to have around the garage. You know, I think a lot of people would say, well, just get rid of him, return him back to the rescue. I mean, hey, at one point, I talked to them about just bringing him back. And I think you gotta be real that not everything in life is perfect. And sometimes the tough things are, are worth working through. And that's, that's where I'm at. 
you know, I, I don't want to give up on this dog because he's he hasn't given up on me. So what I <laughs> hey. That's incredible. Right? You're all right with this guy? Not yet. With me, he's like, it, the vibe is different. Yeah, yeah, totally. He, I mean, he was like this. <laughs> he's like, dude, what? I'm telling you from over there, I'm telling him not to come in. Yeah. Silently, he told you. Obviously, that's not what people pick up. Uh, oh. You know? Yeah. People don't pick up the little messages. People see barking, teeth, lunging, and then people say, what's wrong with this dog? You know, it's bipolar. No, it's a dog was communicating. The human didn't listen. Amigo's aggressiveness can be prevented if Evan and his friends learn to read his body language so they can see the warning signs. Look, his ears are back. Tail is low. That's a good sign. Ears are back. Right. When I came in first, his eyes were on me. When the ears are up, they're already zooming on in you. Like a sniper is already on you. So Evan, that's what you need to be looking out for when your friends arrive. Luckily for Evan, Amigo is easy to read. See, so what I do, <laughs> hey. But Evan is not the only one who needs to learn the signs. Right now, I can see Amigo feels threatened by the energy of these two friends who have come into his space. Can exactly. we leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to show them how they are contributing to the problem. Look, 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 look how you're watching it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> see it? Yeah. These guys are so stiff and tense around this dog that is making Amigo nervous, and nervous dogs latched out. Look at those eyes. Mm -hmm. To help them learn Amigo's warning signs, Caesar uses a wooden crate to test him. It's all right, it's all right. Hey. So he gets, he gets nervous. Look, look, look. It's a box. It's not even me. All right. Hey, now Evan, do me a favor. Go outside. Caesar has Evan leave to work alone with Amigo, but wants him to watch on a monitor. Hey, pass me my leash. If Amigo acts out again, the same way he does around Evan's friends, Caesar wants to show Evan how to correct him. Hey. Hey. It's all cute and cuddly. Yeah. All right, but, but now I have to, to respond back. If he throws a punch, I have to be able to correct that. So I can block the brain before the brain gets into that level. That's where you have a leash. When Amigo lashes out like that, a quick correction and follow through is how Evan can teach Amigo that attacking is not okay. There you go, right there. See that? Hey. Yeah, I see all that. That's the alert part. This is what Evan has to do when his hey. friends come around. I corrected him when his ears were up as he was getting excited, but before he attacked. So you have to learn to avoid. First, you'll be okay if he's avoiding you. You're not okay if, he, if he's in a fight state. Then he learns to surrender. Yeah, this is calm, submissive state. This is what you want. This is crazy. It was wild. You know, I thought it was this big thing where it was gonna take lots of time and wait around, and it was instant. Dude, that was like five minutes. And Miko was just chilling. I saw him on the monitor, just smiling, hanging out. It's happy, right? This is a happy state right there. Look, he's using his nose. This is, this is what you want. When you see the eyes like that, the brain is not normal. The brain is already in sniper mode. Yeah, you want the nose. You want that. Sorry, Evan, but <laughs> you see what I can do without you, right? <laughs> so, all right, what? Come on, Evan. You guys go back over. Okay. All right, my brother, here's your boy right there. There you go. Hold it. There you go. You know, I thought Amigo would, was a relatively aggressive dog. I'm sure that my energy or whatever I was projecting on him had something to do with it. But, you know, today it was pretty clear that, you know, there are ways to control the energy and the vibe. And, there you go. And that's what we got to do. Thanks, man. Thank you. Bob, I just gave you a little bit of what we can do and what he needs. It's not a hard case. OK, good. You know? You hear that? Yeah, he's not. It's you. It's you. I knew it. Me, it's you. Your <laughs> fault. Yeah. You big Thanks, baby. Guys. Appreciate it. Evan is right. His friends may have called me to help Evan, but they are also part of the problem. Appreciate it. Thank you. I need to help them change their energy around Amigo so they don't set him off when they're around. Caesar has Evan practice giving Amigo corrections and returns in a few days to start working with Evan's friends. This, this guy's a friend. Evan's friend, Adam, was bitten by Amigo. 
he bit me here, it broke the skin, I was bleeding. So today I'm gonna work with him to give Amigo a new association around him. So a lot of times when people have something to offer, they feel like they can create a relationship or friendship. So this gives you almost like a, a protection and redirection, because he's gonna focus on the food. It's not just as simple as giving a dog food and you will be his friend forever. The food is just a tool to get you together, but the energy needs to be right between you and the dog. So the scent is gonna bring it to me. There you go. That, so that, that's his signature move. That means he really trusts you and he's in a very happy zone. The energy is way more important. So this is how a nervous person looks like. <laughs> The energy is bad, so uh, that automatically is best not to do it. So your energy make this poison. Yeah. All right, my friend Adam, it's your turn, buddy. All right. Just stay calm and confident. What's the food? No. Look at the look, look at the frame of mind. Yeah, is it here? You see the side, the seriousness here. Uh, yeah. What? There you go. There you go. Open it. Oh. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Don't forget to breathe, man. Your, your back looks hard from here. There you go. Adam is making progress, but I'm afraid he's still way too tense. And Amigo is picking up on that. Do yourself a favor, grab so you can uh, also, I'm just giving you, because he never, hey. All right, my friend, Adam, it's your turn, buddy. All right. Caesar shows Adam how to use food to approach his friend's dog, Amigo. But when Adam, who Amigo has bitten before, is still too tense, Amigo acts out. Hey. Why did he snap there? He didn't even move. Hey, because, because he never relaxed. Adam was still tense enough for Amigo to feel nervous and snap. Hey. These guys have a bad history, and Adam has a scar on his hand to prove it. But I think there's still a way for these guys to be friends. All right, let's go for a walk. To restart Adam and Amigo's relationship, Caesar gets them out into a neutral space for a walk in the neighborhood. You know, Adam's never walked Amigo before. Well, you never walked him on it? No. Oh, shoot. No. Oh, <laughs> Man, we could have started with that. Well, here, take the leash. This is the first. This is the big, big first. Like, walking him, it gives me, like, a little more, like, hey, this is your job with him. Yeah. You know, instead of, like, the food thing was kind of like a little weird, like, I don't know, should I give him food, should I not give him food? Yeah. I was pretty uncertain what to okay. do. Okay, yeah. well, we're finding what works for you. Yeah. This walk is a big deal for Adam. For the first time, Amigo is seeing him in a leadership position. And a dog will not attack a leader he respects. It's easier, it's easier to become a dog friend when it's movement. Right, right. Instead of, like, bottling up his energy, it allows him to release. Yeah. You find things that work for people, you know? It doesn't have to be one way. This is awesome. You know, I, I see Adam walking Amigo. He's never done that before. It was just unbelievable. Right there. You tell him to stay. Tell so, him. So, That's it. There you go. Cool. That's it. So you left the brain calm. Yeah, look, yawning. Yawning's good. Yeah, completely different. Yeah. See, they, when the, with the food, which didn't work for you, mouth was closed. Yeah. So that's something that you did. I can totally do that again. Well, this is exactly what I wanted to see with Amigo. Caesar has made great progress with Evan's friend, Adam, but there's still one more pal who has yet to make peace with Amigo. I'm Amigo's lamb chop. So Evan, for homework, I would like to see you get Robo involved and have him walk Amigo too, and continue practicing your corrections. Okay. Come on, Junior. That's awesome. Come on, Junior. <laughs> You're not... You don't look like a pit bull today, Junior. After two weeks... The boys are in! Hola. Caesar invites Evan and his friend Robo to the DPC to check on their progress. But at Robo's request, Amigo is wearing a muzzle. That muzzle makes them look horrible. We could take it off now. Well, not yet, because this guy has a little tan, so... Thank you. <laughs> Let me see your progress on the walk. Walking Amigo, Robo doing some homework. Robo's not really ready to walk him yet. <laughs>
We let one of my buddies walk him. Yeah. It was perfect. It was fine. No, yeah, without the muzzle. No muzzle. No muzzle. And he's never walked him before. Never. See, that's what you want. Dude. Look at that. The yeah, ears down. down. Yeah. You got to walk the dog or no? No, he was too scared. I understand Robo's fear of a dog that bit him. Can I show you a way? Yeah. All right. Let me have another leash. But I think I can help him overcome it right here. Just relax and forget about it. Focus on my ranch, please, as much as you, okay. as much as you can. I, I got it. So this guy will never go after you. Right. When Caesar does a walk with me and he's got one side and I've got the other, All right. my confidence was a little bit stronger, but it's still scary. At any moment, he could jump out and lunge at me. When you walk in a dog, they should not smell the ground. Okay. They should not stop in every single tree. Right. Their goal is to follow you okay. and ignore everything around. Okay. So then you use the environment as a, as a treat. Uh, okay. You follow what I'm saying? There yeah. you go, good correction right there. I do feel quite a bit safer than when I first met Amigo. And the fact that he doesn't try and bite me immediately is a good sign. There look you at, go. Look at that, you walked him. This has been one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had in my life. I gotta got thank you, because he's gotten much, much better. I can trust him more. I'm more comfortable around when other people are around. Right. So just so you know that your goal is to trust. So his goal is to respect you. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, thanks for thank coming. Thank you so much. I this really appreciate it. This is thank you so casa, much. mi casa. You can see the evolution from Amigo not letting people in my garage, being really territorial about my car, to letting Robo walk him. It's unbelievable. It's really helped me grow as a person. And for him as a dog, you know, being able to coexist, it's a great thing. Six weeks into Jillian Michael's workout program, Crystal and Anthony, along with Crystal's parents, arrive at the DPC to review their homework with Caesar. Hello. How are you, Crystal? Good. How are you? Look at you, Anthony. How are you doing, Look man? At this. Come on this way. When I first met Crystal and Anthony, they were facing eviction from their home at the marina because of Tic Tac's bad behavior. The problem was he had way too much pent up energy because Crystal and Anthony were not able to meet his exercise needs. So now I want to see how both the dog and the owner have changed. What was the result and for Jillian's program? Well, the, the most exciting part is I lost 18 pounds. Wow, wow. How, many, how much did you lost? I think like 12 or 15. You look fantastic. Oh, thank you. And you know, also can feel a difference. I have more energy. It helped me go to the beach with my dog and run on the beach with my dog. It's really fun. Yeah. We're not as afraid of things when it comes to the dog because we know athletically we, we can handle it. I mean, obviously there's a lot of work to still be done. It doesn't happen overnight, but you can tell the difference. All right, let me see the homework. I'm already excited about everything. Oh, skateboard. I like that, Crystal. Fantastic. Oh, good. Dog's passing by. Nice, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you. Tic Tac at the beach. Blowing off some steam. Oh, Ooh, he's at the beach. <laughs> oh my god, he's so he's happy. Just pouncing the water. Yes. And he's just having a good old yeah. time. It made us feel good that we can take the dog out and not be afraid. What a change. Crystal and Anthony are putting in the work, and it's really starting to show. But what I want to know now is can they stay in the boat with Tic Tac? So, what, what's the. Situation in Marina with the manager. Is he allowed well, to be? I wrote her a nice long email recently saying he's a lot m more controllable now and he understands the type of behavior that's expected of him. What are the next steps? And they actually told us that, you know, that we're welcome to stake at the Marina. Congratulations on everything. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, we couldn't have done it without your help, honestly. Definitely thanks to Caesar. We made the family happier, made our health better, made our dog have a happy home, and we are now able to start on this new journey of a positive, happy lifestyle. Thank my, you. My gift to you guys. <laughs> right. Anthony, Thank keep you. it up, buddy. Will Look, do. Slimmer, slimmer. At first, Crystal and Anthony were not compatible owners for Tic Tac because they were not able to keep up with him. But because of the changes they had made, Tic Tac is a healthier, calmer dog, and they have the more active lifestyle they always wanted. Benson, say bye. Say bye to everybody. To be fine. Yes. Viewers should consult a professional before adopting any of the training techniques in this program. Any activity you do with your dog is at your own risk and may produce varied results. Tonight on Caesar 911. <laughs>
an overly excited dog. He pulls and he spins and he lunges at everybody and everything going by. Disrupts these newlyweds' lives. Our dog is putting a strain on our marriage and going to get us kicked out of our home. And drains their energy. I really want to run on the beach with my dog, and I can't do that because I'm going to be winded or my leg's going to hurt. Caesar calls in special guest Jillian Michaels for help. You bought a dog for the life that you don't yet have. And then, a nervous German Shepherd mix. My buddy Evan has a dog that bumps everybody out and attacks every dude that passes by. Jeopardizes a friendship. I am constantly being bitten by Evan's dog, Amigo. But I'm Amigo's lamb chop. is Caesar 911. Caesar's first 911 call comes from concerned parents, Sergio and Mary. Their daughter and son-in-law's dog is creating big problems for the couple. At the marina, they call home. How are you, Miss Bonnie? Hi. Nice to meet how you, are you Sergio. Here? How are you? Good. So, how can I help you? Well, our daughter, Crystal, Son-in-law, Anthony, they got married, and they have a beautiful dog, Tic Tac. Tic Tac. But there's a problem. He is not well-behaved. Something's off. <coughs> they got a boat. You know, they live that's in the good. boat. But in you know, the boat. as soon as you get him off the boat, that's where the problem starts. Anytime he sees any quick movement, skateboard, bike, people jogging, uh, other dogs, definitely. Uh, he just absolutely goes wild. He's scary. He runs in circles, runs and runs. We don't know why Tic Tac spins, other than the fact that I believe he just gets so out of control in his own mind that that's all he can think about doing. It's like kids running around the house. Mm. Yeah, he runs around the yard and runs in the house and runs back Pacing. out. Pacing. Pacing is really bad. How is he with dogs? Tiki loses it. He's over friendly. And that's kind of a problem when you see a big dog coming at you and it's it's scary. Tic Tac will jump on you and try to lick you. He did that to one of the tenants. And so the tenant took it as viciousness. They decided that from now on, anytime the dog is out of the boat, he needs to have that muscle on. Tic Tac looks like a monster coming at them when he has the muzzle on. He looks extremely scary. He looks like Hannibal. Basically, the marina said, unless your dog is trained or you have some sort of training, don't come back with the dog. They have a lot on the line if if something doesn't change, and it's, it's nothing good. If Caesar can't fix this, then they might have to give up the boat and the lifestyle that they thought they would have. The worst scenario is Tic Tac has to go back to the pound, and he'll be put down. So what do we need to do? How do we see your daughter and your uh, son-in-law? They're here. They're about to take the dog off the boat. Then you know Tiki. When you see him, you'll know. So let's go see. do that. Caesar positions himself so he can covertly observe Anthony and Crystal walking Tic Tac. Completely out of control now. Oh. Hi guys. Hi. Oh my goodness, it's Caesar, babe. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Slow, slow down, slow down, slow down. Let's go back over there. Let's go inside that kennel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like a kennel. Come on, Just come over here, like right here, because it's All still right. hot. It's still hot. It's still hot. There you go. Let it smell a little bit. My name is Crystal Vaughn. My name is Anthony Vaughn. And our dog Tic Tac is basically putting a strain on our marriage and going to get us kicked out of our home. Well, we've been married a few months now. We got married in, uh... <laughs> November. <laughs> going to hang out with Daddy. We moved onto the boat right after we got married. Marina life should be peaceful, and, I mean, it is until... Tic Tac's out. Yeah. <laughs> we found Tic Tac when we were at Best Friends Shelter. We went in there one day just to, you know, take a look around. And he got our attention, though, because he did this little, you know, like jumping thing when we walked past his cage, which was real cute until, you know, about a month into owning him, we realized this dog's great, but he's... A little excited. He, he's more than a handful. No, no, no. Take it. 
Because Tic Tac is so active and just so out of control, I can't simply go out on the beach with him or go for walks because I'm afraid my leg's going to hurt or I'm just going to be too tired. From the minute you step off the boat, it's a frightening world for him. The dog you see inside and the dog you see on a leash is two different dogs. It really is. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde type of situation. When Tic Tac's on the leash, he's a bit of a nightmare. He pulls and he spins and he kind of just lunges at everybody and everything going by. With Tic Tac, the spinning thing, to an onlooker, it's, it's probably pretty funny. But for us, it's every single day and it's just exhausting, really. He's not both my kneecaps out of place. You know, I'm worried about him getting hurt. I'm worried about getting hurt. And the sad thing about it is he's always locked up on the boat. The marina is a small community, so word spreads quickly about the crazy dog. We're known he's, as the uh, owners with the vicious dog. We are either going to lose our home in the marina or give up our dog. There's no way we can give this dog up now. He's family. and. There's no way we can leave the marina. This is our home. If Caesar can't help us, we, we have everything to lose. When you approach any dog that is in this state of mind, best just slow down. It's best to put a leash when he's not really actually looking. There you go, now we got the happy guy. <laughs> if I'm going to use one tool for control, it's going to be a rope. This is a rope, by the way, right? right. It's yeah. just a rope. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I want you to see how I do it and see if there's any difference. OK. OK? Instead of being in this position, like you're just skiing, you know right, what I mean? Yeah. The first thing is, Anthony's posture is all wrong. He's kind of hunched over. He should be standing straight up with his chest out like a confident pack leader. And Tic Tac should be next to him, not leading the way. Caesar's first exercise is to have crew members start to ride by Tic Tac. If Caesar can see Tic Tac's trigger, he can correct the behavior. He's coming here. The touch here is just to distract them. It's not hard. It's just to distract them. Because he gets into a pulling state. Caesar just kept Tic Tac from getting into that just really over the top, out of control state that he normally gets into. I can't believe it. When the leash is here, you pull up. Okay. Oh. When the leash is here, you pull back. This right. right. Yeah. That's it. No. Just that switch. Right. Makes a big difference. Oh, Huge. Yes. Once the leash or harness, look at this, yeah. goes in the bottom, Demeanor. no human has any power. Right. Zero power. You just have to hold down for your life. When Anthony walks Tic Tac, he's using a harness which pulls from behind. Many people don't realize this kind of harness actually encourages dogs to pull because it's attached to the chest. One of the strongest parts of the dog's body. And the dogs interpret that as a command to pull. He's listening to you instead of telling you what to do. Right. Let's do it again. This is another way. Yeah. Shh. It started as a curious. Right. This can turn into aggression. Right. Shh. Hey. Shh. Hey, hey, hey. Shh. Shh. Normal. Shh. He's calm now. Tic Tac's behavior, as you see, is very neurotic. In the spinning, the jumping, the pulling, he's not doing proper exercise. He's bored out of his mind, store energy from weeks and months. He's going crazy. He's, he's literally going crazy. He's more than they bargained for when they adapted him. This is good. This is, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, this is working great. I, I want to know how to do this. Because <laughs> well, he's with the dog 90% of the time because I'm always working. But on the weekends, it'd be nice to be able to walk my dog. Yeah. And I just, I'm afraid to do it by myself. Wanted to give a dog a life of excitement and yeah. experiences and all that. But he's always locked up on the boat. I want to be able to go out on the beach with him and go running with him. However, I always have to worry, is he going to be under control or am I going to get winded? Because he's just really difficult to handle. Yeah. The lifestyle that Chris and Anthony were willing to give didn't really match the lifestyle that Tic Tac needed it. Dogs like Tic Tac, when they don't have the proper exercise, they're going to go crazy. 
Tic Tac needs ways to release his pent up energy. So I want to bring him to the DPC, where I can show some constructive ways to exercise his body and his mind. How you doing? Really good. Tic Tac needs both of his owners to become strong pack leaders. But because Anthony spends more time with Tic Tac, I'm starting with him. First, we're going to start with search and rescue. Search and rescue is the equivalent of hide and seek. OK. My search and rescue course will give Tic Tac a chance to get some important exercise. And at the same time, he will see Anthony as a pack leader who can reward him with affection. It allows him to run. It allows him to find something. It allows him to get excited when he found something. So instead of us suppressing what he wants okay. to do, as we're actually telling him where to do it, go hide. OK. Yeah. Caesar is working with Tic Tac, an energetic Vishla lab mix, whose wild behavior could get his owners, Crystal and Anthony, kicked out of their marina home. In order to show Anthony a way to exercise Tic Tac, Caesar has set up a search and rescue challenge. Go. God, look at that. There is no human on Earth that can do it that fast. Come here. Give him affection. Give him affection. Good boy. Good boy. That's awesome. He was a natural. For me, he was he's amazing. Boy. That is a perfect time to be at the highest level of excitement. Look what he's doing. To see him finally get a chance to run and, you know, play and, and just burn off steam and just get to do all the stuff he never normally does, that was really awesome to see. He's an athlete, as you see. So that would be his ideal style of life. You guys have a different style of life when it comes to exercise, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, if you think about it, if you're fair about it, honest about it, you're not matching. Tic Tac doesn't have a place to release that energy at the marina. So I want to show Anthony an exercise that anyone can do that will address both Tic Tac's physical and mental needs. Curious, I got to present him to it. That's good, feels comfortable. The brain is about to move forward. So the mind right now is in a flight state. Right. It's like, how in the world this floor moves? <laughs> the ground's moving. Yeah, yeah, the ground is moving. See he's it? Getting the he's getting relaxed. There you go. He's a quick learner. <laughs> 